Uh, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, in the previous lecture, we had started looking at uh, the notion of rate of change of a function at a point. The rate of change of a function at a point essentially uh, is very useful in uh, analyzing various uh, quantities uh, in various uh, fields. So, we defined for a function f, uh, uh, f of x uh, the rate of change at a point say c to be the ratio of f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h limit h going to 0. We said geometrically this indicates uh, if this limit exists at a point c x is equal to c it indicates uh, it gives us the slope of the tangent to the graph of the function at the point uh, x equal to c. Uh, in, uh, in physics or in mechanics you can uh, think of this giving the notion of instant um, uh, speed at a uh, at a given moment x so at c so if f of uh, x is the distance then f of x plus h minus f of x is the distance traveled in time h so divided by h limit that gives you the rate of change of the distance at that point uh, c or x so that is uh, the notion of limit uh, notion of derivative gives you the notion of uh, velocity uh, or net velocity or speed um, of the uh, body. So, we will keep that uh, mathematically uh, that uh, the limit of a function f at a point c uh, the limit uh, of the quantity f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h, um, h going to 0 if this exists this we will say f is differentiable at the point c and denoted by f dash of c. Uh, we looked at some simple examples to compute the derivative for the constant function we showed it is equal to 0 at every point and for a linear function y equal to mx plus c uh, it is differentiable everywhere with the derivative being equal to uh, equal to the slope uh, m at every point. Uh, for more complicated functions uh, there are tools which are actually theorems in mathematics that help us to compute uh, derivative uh, for functions. So, we will look at those theorems today and see some of their uh, applications. So, let us look at what are called the rules for differentiation. Uh, this, is a, this is a theorem. Uh, so, let us take a, a take functions f and g defined in a domain a b taking values in r. So, domain is a open interval a b and c is a point in the open interval a b. So, let us say that the both the functions f and g are differentiable at the point x is equal to c. Then the first claim is the function f plus g also the function f minus g. So, if you add two differentiable functions uh, then the sum and the difference is also differentiable at the point x is equal to c and the derivative of f plus g at c is derivative of f plus minus the derivative of g. So, you can say derivative of the sum is equal to sum of the derivatives, derivative of the difference is equal to difference of the derivatives. So, but this keep in mind if both f and g are differentiable then only you can calculate the derivative of f plus g. Next let us look at uh, scalar multiple of a function f. If f is differentiable at c then alpha f that is scalar multiple of f with the scalar alpha of the function is also differentiable and the derivative of alpha f is equal to alpha times the derivative of f. So, alpha comes out. So, these two properties essentially say that the differentiation is a linear operation. If you add take the derivative that is equal to the sum of the derivative. If you multiply by a scalar and take the derivative that is equal to scalar multiple of the derivative. Next let us look at the product rule which says if f and g are differentiable functions then you can multiply them and get a new function. So, the theorem says that if f and g are both differentiable at a point x is equal to c then the product is also differentiable and this gives us a uh, way of computing the derivative this is called the product rule. It says the derivative of f and g the product is the sum of two terms and what are the two terms? First is f x into g dash x that is a contribution from the derivative of g 
with a multiple of f. So, f x into g dash x plus f dash x into g x. So, the, for the product rule each one contributes each derivative contributes with multiples of the other. So, f into g dash the derivative of f g is f g dash plus f dash g. You can also try to remember it as there are two functions the first function into the second function. So, derivative of first into second is equal to first function into derivative of second plus derivative of first into second. So, take uh, one by one and add them. So, this is called the product rule. So, the this gives us a way of computing uh, the derivative of a product. A similar formula uh, occurs when it is differentiable. So, uh, <coughs> quotient rule. So, it says if two functions f and g are differentiable and g of c is not equal to 0, this is a very crucial condition g of c not equal to 0 because we are going to divide by c. Right. So, it says that if g of c is not equal to 0, then f over g is defined in a neighborhood of c, which we are not stating here, but, but the consequence is because for differentiability of a function, the function should be defined in a neighborhood. Otherwise, you cannot look at uh, the increment f of c plus h and so on. So, uh, for a function g of c not equal to 0, the quotient function f of g is defined in a neighborhood of c and if both f and g are differentiable at c, then f over g is also differentiable at x equal to c and the derivative of f over g. So, there is a dash missing here f over g dash. So, there is a derivative of. So, here should be a derivative right. So, uh, f over g derivative is given by this formula. So, how do you write this formula? g is in the denominator. So, the term in the denominator here appears is g c square. So, right. So, that is the term in the denominator and uh, for the uh, uh, numerator this g of c goes up. So, g of c into f dash minus f of c into g dash. So, here is a difference coming in the quotient in the product it was a plus sign coming. right? So, that is a formula which uh, unfortunately uh, you will have to remember them uh, once you want to uh, apply them. So, you do more and more problems and then you will remember these formulas. But if you one is proving these formulas, then uh, one automatically remembers this formula. So, let me just repeat once again. Uh, first two properties of differentiation essentially give us what is called the linearity of the derivative. Namely, if f plus g, uh, if f and g are both differentiable, then f plus g, f minus g and alpha f all are differentiable functions. The derivative of f plus g is equal to the sum of the derivatives the derivative of the scalar multiple is equal to scalar multiple of the derivative. For the sum and the product, uh, for the product f into g dash, it is if f and g are differentiable, then f into g dash is differentiable and each one contributes and the contributions are added together. So, what is the contribution of each? g gives you g dash with a multiple of f plus f dash with a multiple of g. So, this is the contribution of the both. So, that is the derivative of f plus g. For the quotient rule, the important uh, condition is g of c not equal to 0. Once g of c is not equal to 0, it will not be 0 in a neighborhood because um, differentiability also implies continuity, which we have not stated. But anyway, because this is uh, uh, an introductory course, we will be using these as the rules. So, basically for computation purposes if g of c is not equal to 0, then f over g is also differentiable at the point c and the derivative is given by this quotient formula and the way to remember is that f over g, g is the quotient, so g c square, g c multiplied by f dash in the numerator minus f c into g dash of c. So, these are the rules which are very useful in computing the derivatives of uh, functions. So, we will use them to compute our. So, let me give you some illustrations uh, how to use this uh, theorem. So, let us compute um, for the function phi x which is 3 x square plus 5 x 
plus 2. So, we can think of this as a function composed of adding by 3 x square one function to this you add another function phi x and to this you add another function 2. So, we can think of phi as a sum of 3 functions right and then we can apply uh, the uh, addition rule. So, let us uh, do that. So, um, phi of x 3 x square plus phi x plus 2. So, if I think of as addition of 3 functions and use the sum formula the rule for differentiation it is 3 x square plus 5 x plus 2 derivative because 3 x square is differentiable 5 x is differentiable and the constant function is differentiable. So, by the differentiation rule for the sum this function is differentiable and its derivative is nothing but 3 x square derivative plus 5 x derivative plus the constant function 2 derivative. So, 3 x square we saw the derivative of x square is 2 times x. So, that is 6 x plus derivative of 5 x we saw it is 5 for the linear function y equal to m x the derivative is a slope for the constant function it is 0. So, that gives us 6 x plus 5. So, derivative of this using the quotient rule is 6 x plus 5. Let us look at the next example. Let us find the uh, derivative of x cube divided by 2 x square plus 5. So, our example is we have got the function phi x which is equal to x cube divided by 2 x square plus 5. So, we can think of it as, a, as two functions in the numerator there is a function x cube in the denominator there is a function 2 x square plus 5. Since both functions are differentiable, so this function is differentiable at every point. Note that 2 x square plus 5 denominator is never going to be equal to 0 because it is x square right plus 5. So, whether x is positive or negative this quantity is going to be <coughs> positive and whenever x is 0 this value is 5. So, this is defined for every x belonging to r. So, denominator is not equal to 0. So, we can look at what is the derivative of x. So, what is the derivative of x? Remember this is a denominator. So, first thing appears is 2 x square plus 5 square and now the same function goes up. So, it is 2 x square plus 5 into derivative of x cube. So, that is the first term minus 2 x square plus 5 the derivative of this into x cube. So, this is how you write uh, the derivative for the quotient rule. So, basically what we are saying is if this is the denominator, so then the denominator square comes and the same denominator comes here into the derivative of x cube and next term minus the de derivative of the denominator into the numerator. So, now we can compute this. So, this is equal to 2 x square plus 5 whole square derivative of 2 x square plus. Uh, so, this is 2 x square plus 5 as it is and derivative of x cube the derivative of x cube like x square is the power comes down 3 x to the power 3 minus 1. So, that is a derivative minus the derivative of 2 x square. So, that is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by x plus 5 right derivative of 5 is 0 constant. So, we forget that into x cube. So, let us simplify this. So, it is 2 x square plus 5 into derivative that is 3 x square minus 4 x multiplied by x cube divided by 2 x square plus 5. So, this is how you will compute the derivative for a quotient function. So, let us uh, revise this. So, phi x can be thought of as a numerator is x cube which is differentiable 2 x square plus 5 which is differentiable and is never equal to 0. So, we can compute uh, by the quotient rule derivative is equal to 2 x square plus 5 whole square this goes up 2 x square plus 5 into derivative of x cube that is 3 x square minus 
x cube as it is derivative of 2 x square plus 5 and that is uh, 4 x. There is a mistake here that sh 5 should not be there at all that is 0. Okay? Right. So, which can be uh, simplified because so here it is correct. So, there is uh, four, uh, even this this is wrong here, this should not be there at all. all right. So, what we showed earlier was ok. All right. Similarly, we can show by inductively the f x equal to x to the power n is a differentiable function for every n and by product rule the derivative is equal to f dash of x is equal to n x to the power n minus 1. The power comes down as a multiple and the power is reduced by 1 for every integer. Of course, when x is uh, negative, uh, this should uh, 0 should not be taken at for x is equal to 0, 1 over x is not differentiable is not even defined actually. Right. Let us look at the next. It says that for n equal to 0, the function is constant x to the power 0 is constant function, so derivative is equal to 0. For the negative, as we have already indicated for the quotient rule, this derivative is this provided x is not equal to 0 because it is going to come in the denominator. Next, uh, I am going to uh, uh, describe another important rule called chain rule. The chain rule is used when there is a composition of uh, functions, function of a function. So, we will state that first and then explain. So, let y be a function of a variable u and u a function of a variable x. So, it is a function of a function. So, when you combine the two, right, x gx takes it to a value u and f takes the value u to a value y. So, when you compose the two y is equal to f of g of x, then the composite becomes a function of one variable that is x. Right? Suppose uh, this is defined in a neighborhood of x equal to c right? and is differentiable at the point x is equal to c. And the function g is differentiable at the point c and f is differentiable at the point g of c. So, that also should be put as a condition. Then the composite function is differentiable f composite g dash of x exists and is given by f dash of g x g dash of c. So, it is chain kind of a thing coming. This is a composite function, its derivative is derivative of f which is the function on the left side at the point g x that is the first term into the contribution by g that is g dash of x. One can also write as d y by d x at the point x is equal to c is d y by d u, y is a function of u. So, d y by d u makes sense, but at the point u which is g of c. So, d y by d u at the point u equal to g of c into d u by d x at the point c. So, this is what is called a chain rule. So, let me uh, explain a bit more uh, in slightly more elaborate way what does chain rule mean. So, basically what we are saying is you got uh, a point x and that goes into a point g of x. So, this is the function g and this by a function f goes to a value f of g of x. Right? So, x goes to g of x and f takes g of x to um, uh, f takes g of x to g of. So, you can call this as u. So, u goes to f of u. Right? So, you can call this as your y. y is f of u okay? and u is g of x. So, you can calculate, want to calculate what is f dash of u. Um, f dash of u that is same as f dash of we want to calculate f, um, sorry. Uh, so, the what is the, com so I have not written the composite function. So, what is the composite function? The composite function is you take x, apply g to it and then apply to x. So, x goes to, so that is a composite function, right, x goes to. So, this is a function of one variable x. So, we can ask, can I compute the derivative of f 
g of x. So, this is normally written as f composite g of x. So, what is the derivative of um, f composite g derivative at the point x equal to? So, one says this is the first function f, right. So, read this equation from the left side f derivative at the point g x. See, f is defined at g x, right, f is defined as g x into the contribution of g that is g dash of x. So, that is how you calculate the derivative of the composite function f composite g. Let us look at uh, one example to understand it is a bit more clearly. So, let us look at uh, this function, right, uh, f of x is equal to uh, x square plus 3 raised to power 3, 5 x square minus 6 x plus 1 raised to power 4. So, to understand this, let us break uh, into two parts. So, let us uh, call, uh, so my function is f of x is equal to x square plus 3 raised to power 3 into 5 x square minus 6 x plus 1. So, let us call this function as phi 1 and call this function as phi 2. So, what is phi 1 of x? That is equal to x square plus 3 raised to power 3. So, let us analyze this function separately. This is a function you take a point x, look at x square plus 3 and then take the power cube. So, you can think it as a function of function you can call u as x square plus 3, then this is nothing but u to the power q. So, you can think of u as a function of x, right, and then phi as a function of u. So, you can write phi 1 of u equal to u cube, right, or you can write uh, g of u equal to u cube. So, this is a composite uh, function where phi 1 of x can be written as, um, you can write as uh, x cube. So, this is the first function, right. So, it is um, x cube. So, that is u cube and uh, so g of, you can write g of u, right. g of u is u cube where u is equal to x cube plus 3, right. So, what is this? So, what is uh, the function, if I look at the function u equal to x cube plus 3 that is differentiable and g of u equal to u cube is differentiable. So, this function can be written as a composite function f composite g, right or g composite f whichever way you want to write it. So, I can write phi 1 of x is equal to uh, first write f of x and then write g of that. So, where g of, so this is equal to f of x. So, if I call this function as f of x equal to x cube plus 3, that is a function u and g u equal to this, then this is phi 1, this function can be written as this. So, the function f x equal to x square plus 3, that is a function which is differentiable function of x. So, u is a differentiable function of x, right. And g is a differentiable function of u. So, g is differentiable, f is differentiable. So, this function is differentiable and what is phi 1 of x? So, the first function g, so it is g dash at f of x into f dash of x. So, what is that? By chain rule g dash. So, what is g dash? That is 3 u square, 3 u square and what is u? u is equal to x square plus 3 from here. So, it is x square plus 3 square into f dash, f dash of x. So, that is equal to 2 x. So, that is the derivative of phi 1. Similarly, we can find out what is the derivative of phi 2. So, what is phi 2 of x? That is equal to 5 x square minus 6 x plus 1 to the power 4. So, I, we can write phi 2 of x is equal to, I can write it as g composite f of x 
where what is f of x where f of x is equal to 5 x square minus 6 x plus 1 and what is g of u that is equal to u to the power 4. So, this is what is my u. So, once we do that what is phi 2 of derivative of phi 2? f is differentiable as a function of x, g is differentiable as a function of u. So, by chain rule phi is differentiable as a function of x and this is given by g dash of f of x into f dash of x. So, what is g dash? g dash is equal to it is u to the power 4. It, so, it is 4 u cube, but u is equal to this. So, it is equal to 5 x square minus 6 x plus 1 raised to power 3 into f dash of x and what is f dash of x that is equal to f of x is this. So, it is 10 x minus 6. So, that is f 2 of x. So, we can now write down the derivative of f of x which was my original function. So, derivative of I can write down now the derivative of the original function. So, derivative of this function x square plus 3 cube 5 x square minus 6 x plus 4 to the power 4. We call this as phi 1 of x into phi 2 of x. So, what is the derivative of this? So, phi 1 phi 2 derivative will be equal to you can call this as first function into derivative of second phi 1 of x into phi 2 dash of x plus phi 1 dash of x into phi 2 dash of x. So, here I am using the product rule and now we can put down the values of phi 1, phi 2 dash, phi 1 dash and phi 2 dash that we have already computed. So, this is the way we calculate the derivative of complicated functions using our limit rules. So, let me revise once again what is this we have done. So, we looked at we can call this as g 1 into g 2 of x this function is g 1, this function is g 2. So, g 1 x is equal to x square plus 3 raised to power 3, g 2 x is equal to x square 5 x square minus 6 x plus 1 raised to power 4. So, uh, using the chain rule you can compute the derivative of g 1 and g 2 separately first. So, g 1 dash of x is this power to the power 3. So, that is like treat this as one variable. So, it is 3 times x square plus 3 raised to power 3 minus 1 that is 2 into derivative of an inner thing which is not x, but is a function of x. So, it is 2 x. So, by chain rule the derivative of g 1 is equal to this. Similarly, I can compute the derivative of uh, g 2 x sorry the derivative of g 2 x g 2 is this function. So, its derivative is this power comes down as 4 into 5 x square minus 6 x plus 1 the power reduces by 1. So, the, uh, this is as if I have treated this as a variable u. So, the power derivative of the power function, but this is not uh, we are differentiating with respect to x. So, derivative of this with respect to x that is 10 x minus 6. So, that is derivative of g 1 and g 2. Now, derivative of f by product rule we can compute is equal to g 1 x into g 2 x g 2 dash x plus g 1 dash x g 2 by the product rule and put the values of g 1 g 2 dash g 1 dash and g 2 and comes out to equal to this. So, that is how you use your uh, chain uh, rule to find out uh, the derivative of complicated functions. So, uh, these rules will be using you should do more and more practice of these things so that you are given a function you are able to compute the derivative of a uh, function using these rules. Uh, in the next lecture we will continue this discussion for some more uh, special functions which we have looked at during our concept of limit and uh, uh, limits and continuity. So, what we have done is till now we have essentially looked at examples of polynomial functions and their derivatives. We will look at some functions like exponential functions and log functions and their derivatives in the next lecture. Thank you.